Welcome to this morning's service when we are celebrating Christ the King. Please join in the responses and you will see the words flowing at the bottom of the screen. Welcome in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice, rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, open our lips. And our and mouths mouth shall proclaim your praise. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. When we have not cared for the world around us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we have seen others being hurt and have not gone to their aid, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we have not stood up to evil and dishonesty and have failed to work for justice, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we have heard the good news of Jesus but have failed to share it with others, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. When we have not loved you with all our heart, nor loved our neighbours as ourselves, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May we know ourselves forgiven in God's love, set free to live with the mind of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. God's forgiveness brings us peace, and we share this peace with one another. We say together, may the, the peace, peace of Christ, Christ be with you, and, and those you love and, and pray for. Amen. Amen. The Collect for this Sunday. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us, who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all in all. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. No. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, 
Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not welcome me, naked and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. What a reading this one is, and how it reminds us that through Christ's coming into the world, God sent the knowledge of his love. And with the knowledge of that love came the expectation. The expectation that those who turned to him should follow in his footsteps. And that means for us, that we too have to listen attentively to the expectations that turning to Christ lays upon us. We are the ones who must show mercy, give generously, care for those who are less fortunate. In Jesus' words, there were so many examples of the opportunities to do as he would do. And those who were put at the king's left hand are the ones who did not respond to those opportunities to do good, to follow Jesus, to show God's love in the world. Jesus has so often turned the questions of the Pharisees by saying that they were the ones who disregarded God's law. They were the ones who missed out on the opportunities to show that care and compassion, understanding by giving help where it was needed, by showing God's love. Whereas to those who followed him, so often the ones who had so much less, they were the ones who gave with generosity. And when Jesus healed, he said to those who thanked him, go and tell those amongst whom you live that this is how I want you to show your thanks, by caring, by spreading that love, the compassion, and above all, the knowledge 
that God is love and that those who follow him can show that and spread that love throughout the world. For us now, we have the opportunity to still continue to show that, that care through giving at this time giving to charity has dropped so much that if we can we can make a real difference by continuing to give but all, equally we can give of ourselves it's hard now to share those smiles as you meet and pass people but the knowledge that a kind word can lift hearts, that a gift of generous giving, whether it's time, whether it's food, whether it's making something that lifts someone's spirits, all of those are ways that those who sat on the king's right hand can do what Jesus wanted of them. As we begin to prepare for Advent and then Christmas, it's a time to think very carefully. Not of what can we give in terms of material things, but actually of how to give what's more important. And that is that we who know Christ's love must be seen to share that, to reach out and give the knowledge of the love of God through Christ to the world that needs it so much. So let us think of being the sheep on the right hand of God the Father, welcomed into his kingdom because we have continued to give of his love to those around us. Amen. Come, let us join our cheerful songs with angels around the throne. Ten thousand thousand other tongues but all their joys are one worthy the lamb that died they cry to be exalted thus worthy the lamb our lips reply for he was slain for thus let all creation join in one to bless the sacred name of God who sits upon the throne and to adore the Lamb. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe, believe in, in God, God the Father. Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray to the Father and Christ the King, who reigns for eternity and listens to our petitions. Loving Father, in our daily ministry as the Church, both clergy and laity, may we give glory to you and further your kingdom. We pray for and thank you for all that the clergy do for us in our parishes of Falls, Tilstock and Whitchurch, leading us in our missions 
deepening and strengthening our faith, comforting us, helping us to understand your will. We pray for all the activities that are having to be online at the diff current difficult times. We thank you for the technology that keeps us in touch with each other and is used to spread knowledge of you, your love and your comfort. We think particularly of time together, the preparations for Messy Church online, the services online, and we thank you for the recent courses online that explored our faith. We pray for those persecuted for their faith, for missionaries and aid agencies in all countries. Direct us to those who are searching and give us wisdom to know how to draw them to your love. Lord, you are our shepherd. We, we are, are the sheep, sheep of your, your pasture. Heavenly Father, we pray for all leaders of the world that the people of all nations may have respect and love for one another, particularly in these difficult times of the pandemic when everyone must act for the safety and care of others. We pray that politicians will make decisions for the well-being of all, with humility, without ambition and self-interest. We pray particularly for our own politicians as they manage the health, social and financial difficulties of the pandemic and also the changes that will affect our country at the end of the year when the UK departs from the EU. We pray that the difficulties will be resolved and that we may be united in purpose to work together and contribute to the world with compassion, justice and understanding of the needs of all and the root cause of the needs of, of others. We have commemorated many aspects of wars this year. We pray that reconciliations continue and pray for peace throughout the world. Lord, you are our shepherd. We are, are sheep, sheep of your, your pasture. pasture. Loving Father, we pray for our homes, families and community and all those with whom we share our lives. May your love shine through all that we do, that the varying talents you have given each one of us may be used for the benefit of others, and that we have patience, kindness and compassion for one another. We pray for our schools and colleges, and all those who learn and work in them, especially those in Lower Heath, Tilstock and Whitchurch. These are difficult times for the young. May they learn that you are always with them and that trusting in you will overcome their fears and anxieties. We pray that all parents appreciate the responsibilities they share with schools for the nurturing of their children. We pray for all those who bring us food, those who grow it, gather it, transport and distribute it, work in the shops and markets. Lord, you are our shepherd. We are the sheep of your pasture. We pray for those who are suffering in any way, the sick, those in pain, those awaiting treatment, those in hospital or care homes or cared for at home, for the lonely, the homeless, the hungry, the abused, the anxious, the depressed, the confused, those physically, mentally and materially affected by the consequences of the pandemic, those affected by climate change and natural disasters. May they find strength to live through their difficult times in the knowledge of your love, we pray especially for those known to us who are suffering ill health or difficulties at any time. We thank you for the skills you have given to scientists to 
develop treatments for COVID-19 and for the hope that it is giving us. But may we understand that we will still need to care for each other. Lord, you are our shepherd. We, we are, are the sheep of your pastures. We thank you, Lord, for those whose living and dying has taught us so much about loving. Freed from their pain and sufferings, may they rest peacefully with you in your kingdom. Support and comfort those who mourn their loss, and through your mercy receive us all, in your time, into the joy of your eternity. Lord, you are our shepherd. We, we are the sheep of your pasture. Lord and Father, we thank you for all that you give us, for listening to our prayers and answering them even if not, not always in the way we asked. We thank you for the beauty of your world. May we act to take better care of it. Lord, you called us. We are your sheep. You are our shepherd, prophet, priest and king. May your Holy Spirit stir our complacency and challenge us to move forward with you whatever the journey of life may hold. May your light shine in us to show others the way to love and serve you and to care for each other. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, heaven. Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We go into the world to, to walk in God's light, to, to rejoice in God's, God's love, to, to reflect God's glory. And the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.